Oh my God, Kristen, Kristen, Kristen. I love you so much. I really hope you love me back. Shayna, we'll be together forever. Okay, married. That's okay. No, you're free. Oh. I kind of miss her, I'm not gonna lie. I actually, I actually love Jessica. I'm gonna go find her. So one of the main themes in Hamlet is gender. Back then, women were not seen as equal with men. This was due to a condition of patriarchy that has made men more dominant in society. They were valued for their social and economic power, their physical strength, and also for their thoughts. Whereas for women, they were seen as the weaker sex. They had to be submissive towards men, and also they were told that they did not have the ability to hold such powers like men. This meant that they were dependent on men for survivability. It caused them to sacrifice parts of themselves, such as their authentic feelings, their identity, and their morals for social and economic power that was controlled by men. This was demonstrated by Polonius and Ophelia, where Polonius told Ophelia to break up with Hamlet in order to preserve her power. Back then, women's power were directly related to their physical body and further beauty. If Ophelia were to give up her virginity to Hamlet, then she would be worthless because she could not wait before marriage. So the quote, I shall obey my lord, Ophelia uh, obeys her father to break up with Hamlet in order to preserve her power. She knows that it's more important to obey her father than to follow her heart because the only person that can give her value in society is only her father. If she were to disobey her father and follow her heart to be with Hamlet, then she would become worthless because Hamlet cannot provide her any social or economic power because later on, Hamlet would have to be forced to marry someone else that is also royal to continue the royal blood. This means that Ophelia has to sacrifice her authentic feelings in order to maintain her social and economic power that is controlled by her father. There are many different gender themes that have occurred throughout the play. Um, the one that I'll be talking about is universalizing the pussy. So Hamlet, um, he, tend, he tends to universalize and generalize all women based on his bad personal, ex personal experiences with the women in his life, such as Ophelia and Gertrude. Um, so the one that I'll be talking about is Gertrude. So he thinks that what Gertrude did by marrying, um, by having her marry Claudius right after King Hamlet died, um, he thought that was just disgusting. He hated that whole situation. He really resented his mom for it because she, he believed that she was betraying Hamlet himself and, of course, her husband, King Hamlet. Um, so he thinks that because of her doing this, because she married Claudius because she was having an affair back then, or um, because she's that's the, her only way of power left over because if she didn't have that power she really would have no more social value because she was already married before and she was older and she didn't really have any more um, value because she was no longer a virgin um, and being a virgin back then was really important for women and really um, determined how much social value she, a woman has. Um, so anyways, um, Hamlet takes this bad personal experience he has with his mother and calls all women weak because because his what his mom did he found weak. So he thinks because his mom did this bad thing, 
to him. He thinks all women are going to betray him. All women are weak. And so that universe wise, it's all women based on how much one bad person is treated. No, a woman does not lose value because it's all about personality. And it doesn't matter how many men or women they've been with, it's what it's what's on the inside that matters. In Hamlet, women were subject to bodily and societal expectations that they needed to uphold in order to find themselves a wealthy husband to provide them with a social and economic status that they need later in life. Ophelia was expected to not think, do, or talk about anything related to sex as it would make her lose honor. This was shown when Ophelia said, I think nothing, my lord, to Hamlet. By denying Hamlet's assumptions, she has retained her purity and value. But this also demonstrates the limitations of what Ophelia was able to think, do, or say in order to retain her status in society. By denying Hamlet's assumptions, she has also retained her purity and thus increased her chances of finding a husband to marry. Ophelia also had to be careful of what she said as it might have made her lose her honor. Hamlet said things that could affect and devalue Ophelia and while the there aren't any consequences for Hamlet, there are consequences for Ophelia had she been not careful of what she said. And if she said anything incorrectly or anything that could devalue her, then she would thus lose her chances of finding a husband as she had been devalued and lost her purity. Had Ophelia been a man, she wouldn't have to worry about the consequences as she could have provided her future for herself. But since Ophelia is a woman, she had to be careful or she would have lost the financial and social and economic status that she needed later in life that a man a husband she needed to marry would provide well, for her. In my opinion, gender is something like people are a bit more afraid to talk about because forever it's been you're a boy or a girl, but now people are realizing that, like things are not. So I think and beauty and honesty may exist and may not exist. It just depends on the person. So if someone was beautiful and they've been, because if they were beautiful, they probably treated nicely and taught nicely things, and so they might do the same to others. So they might be on, they could be honest and, and they could be a nice person because they were treated that way. But on the opposite end, if they were beauty, if they were beautiful and they're treated that way, they might think, well. I'm supposed to be treated this way because I'm beautiful or something and they expect that and if they don't get it, they get mad and maybe so they're not so honest and they will lie so they can get these things that they want. So it could go on both extreme ends, I think. This is a good advice. The best advice I received was no matter how many people drag you down, just ignore them and move on. <laughs> In the play Hamlet, William Shakespeare illustrates that humans can be easily corrupted by power and status in order to gain security and safety for their survival. Example of this, examples of this are evident in the play. One example includes when Claudius betrays King Hamlet by killing slash poisoning him for the power and status of the throne. This is because he was not able to get it. He was always going to be second to the throne with Hamlet around. Another example includes when uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, two of Hamlet's friends, are willing to give up the friendship of Hamlet in order to get a, uh, the favor of the king by spying on Hamlet and uh, getting information for the king. Uh, evidence of corruption in real life includes when businesses usually have no concerns for others in order to obtain power and wealth, and that's it. Revenge is a good idea because like in the old ages when they were doing a lot of stuff, they were doing eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, so I would say revenge is a good idea. In the book Hamlet, um, religion plays a positive and a negative role. I'll be talking about how it's positive. It's positive because when Hamlet enters to kill Claudius, he sees Claudius um, praying, asking for forgiveness, which might lead Claudius into a better place that would not be a long suffrage after Hamlet kills him. Hamlet wanted Claudius to have more of a longer period of suffrage than having a shorter period of suffrage, so Hamlet decides not to kill him then, but kill him later. Because if Hamlet was supposed to kill 
uh, Claudius when he was praying or asking for forgiveness, that might lead him to um, heaven, which will be a shorter period of suffering than a longer period of suffering. It's also negative because when um, Ophelia died, people thought she committed suicide, which was considered a sin at that time, and she wasn't offered a better um, burial place just because people thought she was she committed a sin, which no one is actually sure on because she could have committed a sin, or it was a torture that um, killed her. Could be anything. So this is how it's negative because Hamlet wasn't able to um, take his revenge that his father asked to, and uh, Ophelia didn't get a proper burial spot just because people thought she sinned in their religion. Hamlet, written by William Shakespeare. He illustrates how one can manipulate other with use of words and exploring the weakness. So, uh, for example, uh, in the play, Claudius is basically like the uh, real life uh, politicians. They tell you what you want to hear and providing idea that gives you false reality. So they tell you that they're going to do this, but in, uh, in a sense, so it makes you trust them and want to fall for them. So as the play um, progresses, words are the key to both and the driven action to the play, and as well as the outcome of all the characters. So as Claudius' character developed throughout the play, we can see that uh, his words uh, affected uh, the way how uh, Gertrude feels towards him, after King Hamas died, and later on, he used his words as a weapon to affect Laertes, and which lead to the death of the most uh, character in the play. So, um, in the pro uh, in the progress, Laertes and Hamlet uh, was killed because of the poisonous word that uh, uh, Polonius inf uh, inflicted into him. So. Claudius used flat, uh, flattery words and feeling the insecurity that Gertrude is experiencing from the loss of King Hamlet, which uh, he found the root to the insecurity and the unhappiness then provide her with the reassurance that she needed. So as the play go on, Claudius, by exploring Laertes' anger and hatred towards Hamlet, he used his poison word and poison his mind and used him to kill Hamlet. It seems as Claudius doing everyone as a favor, but instead, uh, he is using them, and they are being used as a tool. Have someone uh, fall in love with you, uh, learn what they like, what they what their interests are, and involve yourself in that with them, and I'm sure that they will learn to like you. The shooting that happened in the, in the United States in Texas was a rash and bloody murder. We pray for the victims and we are appalled at what the um, incident occurred in that church. No one should have to go like that. Okay, so this is Barricade by Orizio. He's a Mexican artist and is basically uh, the people who are revolting against the government because they're being corrupted. So you can see this guy with all these machine gun things. He's trying to break into the palace area. And, Grandpa Tom has three. And I'm really sad about it. Uh, how did he pass away? Lung cancer. Stupid, stupid man. <laughs> Smokes every day. Four packs a day. <laughs> That's not good for you, kid.